Entanglement is one of the key components that makes quantum computing and quantum communication different from their classical counterparts. And one could even argue that entanglement is what makes these approaches advantageous compared to a classical approach. So being able to determine if a quantum state is entangled is of great importance, even if it's just in a theoretical setting. So how can we do this? How can we tell if a system is entangled or separable? Well, if we take, for example, the case of a bipartite system, so a, a system composed of subsystems A and B, we say that the overall state of this system is entangled if it cannot be expressed as a single tensor product of two states, so in this case psi A and phi B, that each represents the individual states of subsystem A and subsystem B respectively. So let's take a look at a few examples and see how easy it is to determine if a state is separable or entangled. So for example, here we have a two qubit system and this is a very trivial example because we already have this written as a single tensor product for something for subsystem A. So in this case, it will be just a single qubit in state zero and then something for subsystem B. So we say that this state is separable, right? Now let's take a look at this other example where we have one over root two of state zero tensor zero plus one tensor one. So in this case, we can see here that we have the sum of two tensor products. And what's key here is that there's really nothing we can do to the state to turn it into a single tensor product of something that just corresponds for system A and something that corresponds for system B. So that's why we say that this state is entangled. Now, how about this other state? So here we have the sum of four tensor products. And if you've worked with quantum states before, you can probably recognize that this is the equal superposition state. But what's key here is that we can see that there, there is a way to factorize things here. So we have, for example, this zero A, zero A here. So we can start putting things together. So we can say this is equal to one half of zero tensored zero plus one. And this will be for A and this for B. And we can do the same thing here for this one A, right? So we do one tensored and then the same thing here. And here we can see that we can take this one step further, right? Because now we have this common term here. This, this state for B is common to this other two. So we can do one half of zero plus one tensored zero plus one. And this is for A and this is for B. So what's key here is that now we have turned this equal superposition state that was the sum of four tensor products into a single tensor product, one for subsystem A and one for subsystem B. And we can even take this one half here into equal parts of one over root two and one over root two to make these two individual states normalized and this is just basically equal to the state plus tensor plus. So clearly we can see here that this is a separable state, right? Because now we have turned this into a single tensor product for something that describes A and something that describes B. Now, how about this other state? So let's say we take the one we just looked into, but we just change this plus for this last summation term to a minus. Well, we can try to do the same thing we did above. So we start factorizing. So this is gonna look very similar. But here now we're gonna have a minus as well. And what we can see from this expression is that we can factorize this further, right? If we do the same trick of distributing this one half into a one over root two here and a one over root two here, well, this state is now equivalent to zero tensor plus plus one tensor minus. So we turn this state from four summation terms to only two summation terms, but we can't turn it into a single tensor product. So that means this state is entangled. Now you can imagine that as our system grows in complexity. So, you know, in the case of qubits, as we add more and more qubits, this process of trying to factorize things by inspection can become really complicated. 
So the question is, is there a procedure or some sort of technique that allows us to know if a state is entangled or separable? And the, the answer to that is yes. There are, are, in fact, many different ways in which we can do this. And these techniques not only allow us to know if a state is entangled, but also will tell us the level of entanglement between two systems. So what I want to do in the next few videos is go over some of the different measures of entanglement. And we'll start with pure bipartite states, like the ones we just described here. And then we'll describe what other type of measures are there that also allow us to include mixed states. Now, the next question will be, well, this is all for bipartite states. Can we generalize this to multipartite states? And the answer is that in most cases you can't, but there are some ways to quantify entanglement in multipartite systems. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Now, before going into the details of measures of entanglement, we do need to discuss a very important concept known as the Schmidt decomposition. Now, the Schmidt decomposition is a technique to factorize our states in a way where we can clearly determine if a state is entangled or separable. And then we can take some of the components of that representation to build the measures of entanglement that we're going to discuss. So in the next video, we'll talk about the intuition behind the Schmidt decomposition, and then we'll go into the details on how to derive it. And then we'll build different forms of entanglement measurement out of that. Now, this will be only for pure states, and then we'll generalize for mixed states. So hope to see you in the next one.